So what is language? Uh, language is a pretty you know, important sort of um, cognitive ability. Um, it seems to you know, definitely define our species versus other primates, for example. Uh, we have very complex uh, you know, methods of communication involving language. Um, it's really sort of a, a, a two-way kind of communication process. And by that I mean, you know, I have ideas or thoughts that I would like to kind of convey to you. Um, and then I need to actually um, convert them into some form that can travel, you know, between me and you, uh, and then be received um, by you, and then, uh, you know, sort of translated back into some sort of, you know, uh, thought or understanding, you know, what it is that I'm trying to convey. Um, so it's like this two-way sort of communication process. And, you know, we talked earlier in the class about um, sensation and perception, about how we have, you know, different uh, forms of energy that we can actually um, utilize uh, as ways to convey information and to, you know, perceive various aspects of our environment. And right now, for example, I am translating my thoughts and ideas into motor movements of my larynx and pharynx and tongue and face, right? Um, and that's generating you know, changes in air pressure, which are emanating out and, you know, uh, you know, traveling at this moment to a computer uh, and then, you know, even more miraculously going to going, you know, through the air to your computer. Um, but it's you're going to be um, receiving, you know, patterns of, uh, of of air pressure changes or sound waves emanating from your machine that have then got to work their way, you know, down your auditory canals, you know, into your inner ear, ultimately, um, for, you know, uh, uh, translation back into some kind of pattern of nerve impulses uh, that can then be channeled along specific networks in the brain uh, for comprehension and then potentially some sort of response, right? So um, there are other channels that we utilize, obviously, for uh, language communication. I mean, those who are deaf, you know, rely pretty significantly on, uh, you know, the visual channel. Um, and certainly there are aspects of communication that are, uh, you know, communicated via uh, visual, you know, uh, uh, channels as well. I mean, when we look at how people are, you know, expressing um, things or how their bodies are moving, how they're, you know, they're, they're gesticulating and things like that to help make points, right? So the, the fact that there are specific areas of cortex, and I apologize for this being backwards, right, um, that are uh, involved in, uh, in, in language, both the sort of preparation of the utterance of the motor output, whether it is speech or sign or written language, for example, right? Um, and uh, for the, you know, the translation into thought, like the kind of uh, comprehension or interpretation of either the, the sound, you know, waves that are, that are coming from somebody speaking or the, the signed, you know, visual inputs from somebody who is also expressing themselves. The, the, the fact that there's this cortical specialization for language, we've known about this for, for some time. It's more than 100 years old, typically because of people who've experienced terrible, you know, um, damage uh, to parts of their brain um, and which left them with, um, you know, significant losses in their ability to either uh, comprehend or produce language or in some cases uh, both.